Good morning. Good morning, sir. Are you all right? Yes, sir. Have you had a good breakfast? Yes, sir. Lovely. I hope you stay as cheerful through the day. Uh, all along, you know, so far on this course, I have I have been trying to tell you about things you already know well enough. There is nothing new that I have told you. Isn't that right? Isn't that right? Yes. Sir. Right. We know these things. We have always known that we should speak politely, we should smile or be relaxed, we should speak slowly, we should have good manners, we should appear at our best to even friends and certainly to strangers. Okay. All of these things are, you know, what we call an accepted civilized norm, a part of the civilized norm, civilized code. Okay. But unless you try deliberately, unless you make a firm effort, they will not become a part of your habit. They must become a part of your habit. You must speak that way at least for the next few weeks, even to your friends, on the phone, even to your family in that manner. Once it becomes a part of your habit, you know, it is like learning another language. Imagine you were learning Chinese or Spanish at this institute, you could learn these languages. How many of you are learning a foreign language here? Wonderful, please do. You know, IIT Madras is about the only institute in this country at the undergraduate level, which gives you this opportunity. You can do engineering and a lot of foreign languages and all these foreign languages will be extremely useful to you, not only for jobs, but also for the development of your personality. So, learning to speak in a standard manner is like learning another language. Once you learned, once you have learned it, you can then switch on informal occasions speak the old way as you like, but on formal occasions you can once you know once it becomes a part of your habit, you can switch to the new way. You can speak slowly with a smile, you know with confidence. You will find that your presentations in the department, in the hostel, at inter IIT or intercollegiate events, more importantly when you get into jobs and lead groups of people like yourself, when you present papers at international conferences, you will find that you are much better heard, much better understood and there is no joy greater than that. Please believe me. Okay? So, please try, do not keep these things confined only to theory. It is like being in gymnastics. I am trying to teach you some skill which you already know. All I am trying to tell you is please practice them outside the gymnasium as well. How many people are going to try to speak slowly beginning today? I want to see your hands up. Please keep your hands up until I ask you to. It will be difficult for you. You will after a minute or two return to your old habit. Your friends will laugh at you. They might discourage you. Some friends may encourage you, but please persist and you will find a great joy in learning after learning that accent. Hands down please. Thank you. Right. Let us let's take it forward. Do all these things speaking with a slow tempo, speaking with a smile, speaking with confidence, speaking when you are turned out well, you know good grooming. Do these things guarantee 
that you will not be misunderstood or misheard, what do you say? They do not, because communication or listening requires two people. You control only yourself, you do not control the other end of the communication channel that is beyond your control, but this is the best you can do. Speaking with confidence, speaking with a smile, speaking at a slow tempo, all these things is the best you can do. You cannot take a hammer and open the head of your listener and put everything there. Can you? Is that possible? That is not possible, but let us look at some reasons from the other end. Why is all that we speak not heard exactly the way we want them to be heard? Okay? And that is what I am going to talk about. In other words, mishearing, if I ever use a difficult word, please interrupt me, please ask me to explain myself, okay? do not take it for granted. Okay. So, what, all I am trying to tell you is that mishearing can have many reasons, both linguistic, language related and non-linguistic, you know, individual related, society related, situation related. Let us look at some reasons, relax, sit with your back to the desk and okay, try and see if you ag agree with me you may not agree with me. Sometimes your listeners may not hear you, if you do not have their attention. Okay? Inattention or distraction, I am talking to you, but your mind may be tuned to the next class, to the examination that is going to come, to the sarang event. You know, how many of you are coordinators here for sarang? Okay. So, you poor guys, you know, you have a lot of thankless job to do, only for a shirt okay. or you know. So, your mind may be preoccupied, others may be planning to go home for sarang next week, you know, they made their train tickets may be wait listed. There can be lot of factors which can distract you. As a speaker, all I can do is to frequently get you back to the classroom. That is why you might have noticed television channels take commercial breaks. Commercial breaks come at regular intervals. In the best of channels, they come at about 7 or 8 minutes and in the rank commercial channels, such as those which show you only cricket or only what is called 10 sports, you know one fat man hitting another fat man, nothing in my opinion is more vulgar. Okay. The break comes every two and a half minutes, because it is so boring otherwise. Okay. So, that is why you know when you speak, you should also try and do lot of lot of speakers, lot of professional speakers, bring in jokes, bring in stories, bring variety in their talk. Okay. When I asked you about you know speak slowly. I, I remember one or two semesters ago, no, one or two years ago at least, somebody asked me, sir, how can I speak slowly if I have to catch a train and I am late for the train? What is your answer? What is your answer? What is your answer? All that. You know, I mean, I am not telling you divorce your common sense. You do not even have to speak, thrust your hand into the window, give the booking clerk the required amount of money, and just tell him Guntur, Vijayawada. You do not have to tell him, can you please kindly give me a ticket to Guntur and the train goes. Okay. Common sense is the best guide. Do you agree? Yes or no? Common sense is the best guide in all aspects of human behavior, 
the only problem is common sense is not very common. Okay? You have to acquire it, you have to use it. So, inattention or distraction and similar things can be a huge reason for mishearing. Similarly, similarly, memory restrictions, you know, you have been talk, you are talking about something which happened yesterday and your listener does not remember, fails to recall. That is why, you know, when you write letters, you give reference in continuation with our conversation on this topic or in continuation with my earlier letter. What can you do? on such situations, in such situations when you talk, okay? would you say please refer to that will sound pretty artificial, that would not be natural, but do whatever you can try and make sure in a very pleasant, not unpleasant manner, you know. Nothing is more disastrous to the act of communication than an irritated listener. A listener who does not want to hear you, will not hear you, no matter what language you speak, how slowly. And a listener who wants to hear you, will hear you in spite of barriers of language. Otherwise, Tamil speaking boys would not fall in love with Hindi speaking girls. Okay? Right? It happens, you know human willpower is the greatest asset of human beings. It is also the greatest liability of human beings. Okay? So, turn on that, you know, motivate your listener to listen to you. There can be memory restrictions. Okay? You, you know, memory can be related to topic, can be related to relationship, can be related to experience, can be related to a variety of things but mishearing can also occur because of that. There may be personal reasons. I do not like BTECs. I do not like BTEC students wearing t-shirts without collar. Okay? I do not like BTEC students from Bihar. What can you do about that? You know, and if I have, I am, I am listening and somebody from Bihar speaks for no fault of him. I will not be focused. You know, human beings are not always rational creatures. Do you agree? You know, hostile election, okay, only boys from a particular part of India always win general elections. When it comes to voting, we behave like the great Indian public. Okay. We vote for reasons other than rational. The candidate is from my part of the country, the candidate is not from my part of the country. The candidate is my gender, the candidate is not my gender. You know, it is only extremely rarely that a girl at this institute has won an election. Am I right? Say yes or no? Yes, yes. Many reasons. Girls, you know, they, they have little time to waste. They are more focused into studies. Maybe they do not contest elections. There can be all kinds of things, but personal prejudices, personal prejudices. I have always difficulty understanding my wife's mother, but I have never any difficulty understanding my own mother. Okay? These are personal prejudices. Okay? I hope you understand both your mother and your wife's mother equally well or unwell. <laughs> Similarly, you may be unfamiliar with the subject. If somebody imagines takes me to a lecture on the second law of thermodynamics, after about a few minutes I will start playing crossword puzzle, you know, or some such thing, because the subject is totally new to me. But if the speaker is determined, the speaker wants to include people like me in his talk, then he would start simplifying the basics. He would involve me in conversation. If I have to define syllable, you are not a student of phonology and I cannot go in complex geometry of syllable. I can only tell you 
word can have one part or two parts. Example, cat, it has only one part, but monkey, how many parts? Two parts. I have simplified it for you. I have included in you in my subject. You know, these are common sense tricks. This is how you can proceed with audiences where you have mixed groups, people from mechanical engineering, people from chemical engineering. You know, uh, I was once upon a time a member of the board of academic courses and we were reviewing B.Tech courses maybe in the mid 90s and I found that quantum mechanics was being taught by four departments at this institute and in four different ways chemical engineering, mechanical engineering, chemistry and physics, all the four departments. Okay. Actually, they came to the extent that they thought one particular element, you know, a compound, one department physics people said it was solid and chemistry people said it was liquid. Do you understand? Are you with me? Okay. So, when you speak to mixed groups, subject familiarity with subject can be a particular point. There may be noise, you are trying to say imagine yourself at the central station, lots of background noise, distractions. This is studio, we are lucky working in the studio, it is sanitized except the noise of the air conditioner, which is again very subdued. We have no other noise, but you know in HSB, MSB, BSB, when we have classes, you know, then people passing through the corridor, the birds, the monkeys another lecturer in another room. Some people speak so loud that when they teach in BSB, my students in HSB take notes. Okay. They are heard from miles apart. So, there may be speaker related problems. You know, some speakers may be irritating, boring, etcetera, etcetera. There are these, these are generally known as non-linguistic reasons. There may also be linguistic reasons. I am going to be a little technical. Are you with me now? Everybody please. Okay. I am going to be a little technical. Mishearing can also occur because of a number of language related reasons, linguistic reasons. Say for example, a syllable which is the basic organizing unit of a speech. Okay. Sounds are gathered in syllables, sounds do not travel by themselves. They are put together in a bag called syllable and then they are passed on. So, there can be a one word can have one syllable or more syllable and within each syllable the number of sounds can differ. Look at a syllable like streets, how many sounds are there? Can you count and tell me please? What are those? S, ta, ra, e, ta, sa. Five sounds or six. How many? How many do they come to? Yeah, six sounds. Okay, in one syllable. On the other hand, there is a syllable like cat. How many sounds here? Only three. But they are both syllables. Do you see the difference? Here is a family with six members, nobody working. The poor mother is expected to feed four boys, one husband and herself. Naturally, that mother cannot give money to her sons to have pizza in the morning and burger in the evening. She will have to be more careful with money. On the other hand, imagine another family, only one son both mother and father working. The Americans call them DISC, double income single kid. Okay. The kid can, you know, the kid will not eat anything, he will have been spoiled by then, you know. He will not know what he likes, he does not, what he does not like. A joke is, can I tell you a joke? A joke is, once a spoiled boy like this insisted for that evening for the dessert, he would have something which is hot like summer and cold like winter. What did the 
hotel waiter give him? Water will be hot, cold like winter, but not hot like summer. Any guess? That is where you require imagination and intelligence. And the waiter in that hotel was intelligent. He put some chili in the ice cream. And that disc boy, double income single kid, you know, had his dessert, which was cold like winter and hot like summer. Okay. So, you know, when you have more, word, more sounds and only one syllable, you naturally will have to be, will have to give it longer. So, streets should take a few nanoseconds longer compared with cat, but in cat the vowel is long. Okay, so, there are these factors. Look at the next word, how many syllables? What is that? No matter what I told you yesterday, you will have to pronounce with two, pronounce it with two syllables. The next word? Elephant. How many syllables? Three. Everybody please. How many syllables? Three. What is the word? Elephant. Elephant. What is the next word? Elephant. How many syllables? Five. What are those? You, ni, v, c, t. Once again, everybody together. How many syllables? Let us count them. U, ni, v, c, t. Okay. Now, if you give each syllable some time, maybe a few nanoseconds, some syllable may take a little longer, some syllable may take a little less, but comparable time, okay, then you will find though in English you know uh, stressed syllables, I will tell you later take longer and unstressed or understressed syllables take a little less, but allow decent time for otherwise you will be misheard. I okay? will give you some examples. If you have more sounds and you do not give them enough time, then the words get distorted, they do not retain their shape. It is like you know Indian buses, you get into an Indian bus with clean shirt, a starched pant shirt, tie etcetera, but there are 250 passengers in a bus meant for 60 people, especially in my part of the country. When you come out of the bus, is your shirt still starched, it is crumpled disabled, you are irritated, tired, you know when you, when you pack more in less, distortion is inevitable, it does happen. Look at these words, it should be available, but because people spoke rapidly, what did it become? It become available, one part went. The proper word is government, what is the proper word? Government. What is it? Government. Stressed on the first syllable. What is the proper word? Government. Government. But if you spoke in a hurry, like in many languages, many Indian languages, you know, we say government. We eat away two or three syllables for breakfast or lunch. Lots of people, particularly in South India, do not pronounce the last sound of the number 5, let us say 25, 35, how many do you want 5? What is 5? It is 5. What is it? 5. Your lower lip should come to your upper teeth. Watch my lips. 5. Say it. Five. Please keep saying v. Five. Just say v. Everybody keep doing it until I ask you to. Please kindly record them. Everybody, please Aparna, you also. May God bless you. Okay. Keep doing it. Keep doing it, please. Keep doing it. Okay. Do it again. So, what is the number after 4? 5. What is the number before 6? 5. 5. What is the number after 11? 12. What is the number after 10? 11. 11. What is it? 11. 
11, 11, okay, v, you know. So, articulate each sound. Articulate each sound the way it ought to be. But when you speak rapidly, some sounds get lost, dropped. Okay. Similarly, what do you think, think that word stands for? The next word? Architecture. Architecture. What is it? Architecture. Yeah, go slowly, comfortably. What is the word? Architecture. Architecture. What is it? Architecture. Right. But if you speak in a hurry, it becomes architecture. What is the next word? Yeah, King, you know last year, last year or year before last, we from this institute conducted a big training program at the airport. We had about more than 400 air traffic controllers, you know. It is those air traffic controllers who tell the pilot how high or low, at which altitude, at which speed they should fly. Pilots do nothing other than control the aircraft, because in the air you do not have landmarks. Okay. So, air traffic controllers have a huge role in air traffic and we conducted a training program for them, telling them only about these things. But before we conducted the program, we recorded their speech. We went into the air traffic control tower we recorded 100 hours of their speech with a variety of pilots from different countries and what we heard was appalling. What we heard was surprising and made us seriously believe in God. There definitely is somebody called God, the biggest pilot and the greatest air traffic controller who controls all the air traffic. Because you know they spoke in a hurry. International Civil Aviation Organization says, speak at the rate of 100 words per minute. You asked me that question, right? Okay. These guys or these gentlemen and ladies spoke at the rate of 1000 words per minute. I have their recordings. You are welcome to hear them any day you like. And we found when it, they spoke rapidly, they did not sound like saying King Fisher, though they intended King Fisher, but in a hurry they said King Sir. Now, you and I would know because we are from India, but a pilot from Romania or another pilot from Brazil, Spanish, Italian, Romanian speaking pilots would have great difficulty. Similarly, you know the air traffic controller wanted to tell the pilot hold on the holding point. What did he want to say? Hold on the holding point. Once again, what did he want to say? Hold on the holding point. But because he spoke rapidly, he said hold on hold on point. When we heard me and my 13 colleagues, 14 English teachers were involved, we racked our brain. And finally, a smart guy after two or two and a half hours thought, God, they are trying to say hold on the holding point. Okay. So, you know distraction, distortions can happen if you speak rapidly. And if you speak that way, then listener and speaker are not linked together. This listener is thinking of something. So, you know you may be thinking of that and the speaker may be talking of syllables and templates and phonology. So, the speaker and listener may not be together. Okay. I am now going to play you some examples from a project in listening, you know, in sciences, in arts, in researches, sometimes we have curious questions. So, once we had a project which had a curious questions, how do and why do people mishear? What could be the reason? So, what we do did was we played recorded stories, conversations, plays, lectures from a variety of people a lecture from an American professor to Indian students, a lecture from Indian professor to Indian students, a story told by an Indian mother to Indian students, students from the college, students from the school. We took a variety of listeners, nearly 1100 listeners from various backgrounds and we played these recordings to them 
and then we asked them questions about the recording and we got a variety of answers. We found that you know this was our main conclusion that careful speakers, can you read it to me? Careful speakers have better heard, better answered. Once again with pauses, tell me once again. Careful speakers were better heard, better answered. Oh, you are not taking a good pause, you know good pause should be heard. Careful speakers were better heard and better answered, better answered. Come again, tell me. Right? Those that were not careful were misheard. Okay? But, but misheard words were also related to the right word in some manner. A noun was only a noun was supplied for a noun, only a two syllable word was supplied for a two syllable word. The only problem was it was not the word. In place of Irfan, they heard Rahman okay? or Pathan. In place of Ram, they heard Shyam. So, both Ram and Shyam are nouns, they are both one syllable, but if you want to cut the head of Ram, they ended up cutting the head of Shyam. Not a gross, you know miscommunication. Look at some examples. We played the tape yesterday and you might have seen there was a word there called and he thought I was a novice. Do you remember? Yes or no please. Yes. Yes. Do you remember I played a tape yesterday, played a recording yesterday and the recording said the man at the same, you know this is what memory restriction. I have heard it 300 times, so I remember it by heart. You have heard it only once. It is unfair on my part to expect you to remember that word, but I am now trying to tell you that the speaker said something like the following. The salesman thought I was a novice. Now, because it was not said carefully the first time, we asked the listeners to fill in the blank. The salesman thought I was a and these were the answers we got. Some listeners said enormous, some listeners said can you give me the other words? Obvious. Next. Nervous. Next. Novelist. Now, I am asking you a question and this is a question in thinking. Is there anything common among these four words? last syllable, yes. Anything else? Everybody please try, you see brain is such a powerful engine that the more you make it work, the better it works. And if you do not press it, if you allow it to sleep, if you allow it to become lazy, then you know it does not do anything. Tell me why novice was misunderstood for? enormous, obvious, nervous and novelist. That was possible, but why did they not in place of when they misunderstood novice, why did they not say it American? Number one, syllable match is there. Anything else? Anything else? Are you also in the class? Okay, can you try and give me the answer? Okay, but after stress, E is hardly heard. That is a very good point you have made. Enormous has three syllables, E, nor, must. But because the stress is on, nor. So, E is hardly heard. The listener hardly heard E. The listener, the distracted, tired, bored listener only heard enormous and he thought okay, it is enormous. Do you see the point? Do you agree? I do not know, I may be wrong. I did not go and ask the listener to explain himself, pardon me. Okay? 
I did not ask the listener to explain himself, but this appears to be, this seems to be the reason. In other words, look at the similarity of novice, the first syllable is stressed, obvious, nervous, novelist. In all of these cases, except enormous, you know enormous and obvious are both adjectives, but nervous is also an adjective, only novelist is a noun, but in that slot both noun and adjective can fit. He thought I was a novice, a uh, is hardly heard, it is unstressed. In a rapid speech it may even be dropped. So, if the slot is blank he thought I was, then you can have both adjective and noun. I will not explain other, other examples in such detail, but the point I am trying to make is you know that a listener can misunderstand you in a variety of ways and for a variety of reasons. You have to anticipate, if you want to be a successful speaker, an effective speaker, not only to your mother or to your wife or to your best friend, but to all the world. If you want to be heard like Buddha was heard, like Gandhi was heard, imagine Gandhi at a time when there were no mobile phone, when Gandhi did not even have access to radio, the radio had come, but do you think the British invited him to tell the entire India on radio, the British quit India, did they do that, did they do that? No. No. Americans occasionally recorded him and broadcast him from their radio, but not the British, okay, except when it suited them. Okay. How did Gandhi manage to wake up the entire country within 20 years? What do you think is the answer? Read, read about Gandhi, you know, there are lots of books available on or about him. Someday I will play you some tapes from Gandhi here. Okay. Gandhi also spoke slowly. Where there is truth, there is God. He did not say where there is truth, there is God, okay? because that is your best bet. Look at other thing, next example, woodwork. Why was it misunderstood that way? Can you tell me, can you make a guess? Context, yes. So, context that context good work will fit, book work will fit. I read a book on woodwork. Why was wood, you know, work was understood all right, work was understood ok. Why was wood misunderstood for good or for book? Can you tell me? Sorry? Lots of similarity, you know, wood and book, one syllable, okay, it is a, it comes at the head of a two word compound, two word phrase. Moreover, wood has only three sounds, book has only three sounds, good has only three sounds, sounds are very similar. O is common to them both, you know, this is how you may be misunderstood. Uh, let me let us go to something interesting. You know, the I asked for a lady's size. The salesman asked that boy, "What kind of saw would you like?" And the suggested the salesman himself suggested lady's size. Why did he suggest lady's size? Do you remember? Easy for the beginner, sir. Okay. So ladies, but lady's size was misunderstood for that listener must have been a poet, okay. ladies eyes or ladies side or latest side. What is common between ladies and latest? Stress on the first syllable, 
then they are both two syllable words bisyllabic they have both only two syllables okay experts let us go to longer utterances what do you want it for the salesman asked me and want it for was misunderstood as want sir wanting for want to firm what is similar between want it for and these responses once again stress number of syllables etc etc let us go to something more interesting Okay. Look at these. Can you tell me, can you make a guess why bookshelves were misunderstood as bookshops? They are both, they are both same number of syllables, how many syllables? Two. Two. What else? Are they both adjectives or nouns? Nouns. They are both. Are they both adjectives or nouns? Nouns. Are they both adjectives or nouns? Okay. They are both nouns. They are both complex phrases, you know, two made of two words. Anything else? Okay. Once again, you know what is uh, what is uppermost in the mind of the listener. Maybe the listener is more aware of bookshops than of bookshelves. Okay. Look at the first word. What does it mean? What is the meaning of the first word on the left hand column? What does it mean? Anybody please try and guess. Can't you, are you so afraid of going wrong? Are you embarrassed when you go wrong? Make a guess. What does it mean? The first word left hand column? Incorrect. Incorrect. Yeah. Okay. What? How do you pronounce that word? Fallacious. Fallacious. No, not fallacious. Okay. Right. Why was it misunderstood for? Palatial. What is what is similar between them? Okay. How are they related? Lots of you know syllable structure is similar, they are both adjectives, they may fit the context. Again and again, you know, I am trying to tell you that the brain of the listener it does not work exactly the same way. Okay. So, unless your presentation therefore, is clear enough, unless you are interesting, unless you are well prepared, unless you are a pleasant and confident speaker, the chances of your being understood would be limited. I would like to summarize now. Okay. If any one of you is interested, I can copy it these uh, I can copy these slides to you okay uh, come back to uh, okay I like to summarize mishearing can have many reasons there can be non there can be non linguistic reasons can you give me some non linguistic reasons noise a noise b context 
may be familiar or unfamiliar. Any other? Distraction. Next, personal prejudices, etc., personal factors. Next, memory restrictions, great. Okay. There can be linguistic factors, linguistic reasons. Okay. Can you give me some linguistic reasons? The words may be understood, but not exactly the way you want them to be understood, right? What can go wrong? They may be similar words. Similar in what? Similar, similar in? Sounds lovely. Similar in type, noun for noun, adjective for adjective. Similar in meaning. Okay. Any of these? Any other? Any in other? The context or similar in context. What can we do? There are a number of factors that control the success of communication, linguistic, non-linguistic. Our best bet as speakers once again is the same. We can, we must prepare as well as we can. We must be pleasant confident, speak slowly with a smile, right? And you can hope that at least 75, 80, 90, sometimes if you are lucky, even 100 percent communication will take place between you and your listener when you speak. Any questions, please? Anything you wish to ask me for today? Thank you. Have a good day.